everybody. This is Pam with Jesus Junk Journals, and we're getting ready for this week's art journal project. And so this week, the verse is 1 John 4, 4. You are from God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And the prompts for this week are tool, which is, you know, netting, the fabric and a window and flowers. And I've been talking about flowers on and off and I've been painting flowers on and off and I thought, well, this would be a good one. Um, I switched out one of my prompts so I could do flowers because it's springtime, we're all kind of probably in the mood for spring and I thought, well, and this verse could, could certainly go with that. So I'm gonna talk about making flowers you can do it however you like. You can paint the flowers on your page or whatever, but I'm gonna talk about um, ways to make flowers and attach them. And so I'm gonna show you some that I've made. Let's see, there's those. Here's, so here's some flowers I've made where I use book pages and I painted them on the book pages and they're super cute. And then some of them I took uh, tracing paper and put a pattern on it and then stitched the middle together. And some aren't done, haven't been combined. That's waiting for a middle to be put on it. There's another one that's stitched. And then I've got greenery to go with it that I cut out. And so I can make a flower arrangement out of those. And There's some that I did on watercolor paper. There's another one that I stitched. And they can just be a simple spiral. I mean, don't think that you can't paint flowers because you can paint, um, here I'll show you one. Here's one I did the other day where you can be a little more detailed, but um, you can certainly do these real graphic kind and they're just as cute. There's one a little more detailed. so. There's those, and I like them on the book pages a lot. I think that looks really cool. And then, of course, stitching them just kind of takes it up another level. And then the ones I showed you the other day, I cut some of those out. And so these are ones that I just put on regular, it was a drawing paper, and I just quickly sketched flowers and some I cut out. So there's some examples, and I'm gonna do some here real quick, just for those who maybe have not ever done it before. Maybe you feel kind of reluctant to try it. <clears throat> I'm gonna leave that out because I wanna remind myself to show you something. <laughs> okay, so there's what I'm talking about as far as attaching flowers. Now, of course, there's lots of other ways you can do them, so um, there's no right way and wrong way. Okay, so let me get my sketch pad. I think I'll start with watercolor. So let me get some water out here. Get my little watercolor paints out. I got a new toy. I got some ink tints. Um, watercolor pencils. These are, I like them. Here's my little palette. You know, I tell you, anytime you get a new product, make make yourself a palette so you know exactly what the colors look like because you can't always tell by looking at their uh, guides that they give you on the, on the crayon or pencil. And see, same thing here. You can't really tell once you've added water what these are gonna look like. So there's my palette for those. And this one, there's my palette for that one. So see, those are a little more intense than these. Um, so anyway, onward. <laughs> so I'm gonna take a, a round brush and you can try different brushes. I'll just try this one, um, Strathmore 5 and so let's see, um, I'll try pink. So I'm just gonna, or red, kind of pinkish red. 
And you can literally just like go like that and you've got a flower. So, and you can do them all different sizes. And cut them out and put them together. And then there's another way to do them. And this is like, you've probably seen these. These are real popular right now where it's like you do kind of petals. And kind of take a little bit of practice to get them exactly right. But they still look cute even if you don't do them perfectly. Ideally, they're pointed on the ends of the petals. They look nicer, but that's okay. You'll eventually, and so you see how I overlap between the two in front of it and just start to draw petals. And I mean, flowers are one of the easiest things to do. And you can make it as big as you want. And let's see. I'm gonna do some orange here. You can also like almost make them solid. And then come back with another color and do a swirl on top. Let's see if I can show if I can show you. They're still wet, but it works better when they're dry. Let's see, maybe let me try on this one. It just gives a little bit of, well, let me try in a different color. It gives a little bit of uh, more like that. Just gives it a little bit more interest because there's two colors in it. And uh, let's see. Oh, and then the petaled one. So here's what I did on those. Like I... Let's see, did I use, try to make an uneven number if you can. Of course, I don't right off the bat. <laughs> Five is a good number for petals. <laughs> I keep doing six. <laughs> And I'm showing you this, how sloppy you can be because literally you can cut them out later. And if you've, you know, like that right there, you just cut around it however you want it to be and make it more petal, shape more like a petal. I'm gonna turn that into five. And um, see, even as messy as this is, you can come back and so like, let me show you now with a Crayola. Let's see, how about if I use red Crayola and go like that. And you want it to be real round and loose when you do, you do your petals like that. I mean, if that's how you want them to look, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> but, and then I go back with water and it smears them a little bit, adds a little bit more wash color to them. And so like this, let me, sh let me show you, like you can make it a nicer shape with a pencil or Crayola, make them rounder like that. And Go back and melt the Crayola, so to speak, and cause a wash to show up. And then you can let, as you make these, you can, like I had the layers where you have a center, you can sew to the middle of it if you want to. And so let me take a pencil and show you. So, well, I'll do, I'll do orange and orange. So, 
just to add a little bit of detail, you can do that because it'll still hold the lines, even though it's going to make orange color too. Just gives a little more definition. Or you can use a different color. You can even use black. Let's try black and see how that looks. Not liking that a whole lot. <laughs> Never mind. Don't use black. I mean, it'll work. If I cut that out and put it in an arrangement, it'd still be fine. Um, let's see. Oh, and then leaves. Um, so let me show you leaves. So, you, oh well, you can do the leaf with the flower and cut the whole thing out together. two leaves, three leaves, whatever you want it to be, whatever size you want it to be. And I'm gonna go back here in just a second and get a different color, but I'm gonna lay the green down first. If you get a weird shape like that, don't worry, because when you cut it out, you cut it into a leaf shape. So they're never, it's never unfixable. <laughs> you, you got a lot of chances to fix it if you do something weird with the paint. And I don't like to make it solid like that. I do like it where it's got kind of lines in it. And so it's a little bit drier brush, a little bit more pigment or paint on it. And this is with a great big brush. You can also use a little brush and have a little bit more control of those little small leaves. And I am gonna get, I think I'll get a smaller brush. And I'm gonna go back with a little bit of blue-green and just kind of blend that in just a little bit to give it a different tone of green. That might have been a little too exciting, but. Or not. Didn't get the shape on that very well, but. You can blend it out and when you cut that, it'll be more of a leaf shape. Thing. Oh. Blend that out just a little bit. Okay. I'm going to tear that page out. And I'm going to get yellow. Let's see, do I have, let me use my yellow pencil and just kind of like make like kind of daisies, I guess. Five, I'm going to do five petals. And so they're hard to see, but now I'm going to take my brush. Might be a little bit too big of a brush. I'll try my little one and just kind of smush them around. And the yellow it doesn't matter as much because it's it doesn't show the detail as much. But I'm going to show you what you want to do. 
And you could use these like this and just cut them out and they'd be cute. But what I was gonna show you is, um, so I have this gold, this darker yellow. So I'm gonna use that, let me mix them up. And this is where you wanna do that swirly. And this is kind of what I'm gonna try to redo. Hopefully I can do it today. <laughs> But you do these swirls around. And that gives you the kind of the definition. That didn't come out very good, but hopefully when I cut it out, it'll be all right. And even like how I swung out big on that one, if you cut that out and group it with other flowers, it'll be cute. So, whoops. If you miss it, go back and redo it. And just do this kind of swoopy, swirly. The darker yellow gives it definition and makes it look more like a flower. So that's another way to do flowers. I'm trying to think, oh, I know what else I did. I did uh, what I think of as alliums. So let me get my, is this the one I, oh well, I'll use. So what I did is I just made a bunch of circles And you can make imaginary flowers. You don't have to make specific kinds, just anything works. So circles, big circles, little circles, you know, it's gonna look like. And then I think I used my reddish Crayola and just kind of colored it with that. Don't worry about getting out because you can, when you cut it out, you can fix it. And let's see, I kind of need a, I need a medium sized brush. Well, let me see. And I can cut that circle out in the middle or I could go back, there's my pencil. Let's see if I can go back in. Yeah, and add circles after the fact. If I wanna make it bigger and take up all of it. wet that down just a little bit. Now, did you notice they kind of melted away? My circles kind of melted away when they got wet. So, in theory, you could like make your circle and put your dots in later after. It's really good to let these dry. I'm trying to hurry because I'm showing you, but it's good to let like one layer dry and then go back with the other layer. It'll, it'll uh, stand out more. And like I said, you can even make flowers like this because if you sew a middle to them, it's gonna look like a flower. So you can't go wrong. Just make yourself a bunch of circles if if nothing else seems right to you. So here's some other shapes you can do. These spiky ones look kind of more like lilies. Now here's, these I did with the pencils. And so you can take the pencils and be a little more. So you kind of do that middle thing and then you start to wrap the leaves around like that. As many times and as big as you want it to be. I mean, you can, um, and then take your water, wet it, and there you have your flower. So that's a way to do it. The spiky ones, uh, I was experimenting. I don't know that I love the spiky ones. Maybe if I made it more like a starfish and the, so that they aren't so skinny and pointy, that might make me happier. So then let me wet those. So I'm getting just a light pink background. And then I'm gonna go back with my orange. I like orange and pink together, that's why I kept doing that. And just kind of making a line on them. And you certainly don't have to do that. So let me try making 
I love daylilies, so I think maybe that's where I'm thinking this shape comes from. <laughs> and I'm gonna do some lines. Being sloppy, because I know I can cut them out and make them the way I want them. Oh, so I'm gonna go back and wet this orange. Oh, I know what I did. I'm looking at these. They don't look the same. It's because I used the Crayola. That's what I did. All right, so I'm just going to go back. Add some pink. Yeah, and if you don't like the shape, just go back and redraw over it. It'll all be fine. And then when they dry, you can put little black um, dots in the middle. So I was just gonna show you some of the different ones I did. Here's kind of the daisy shape like that you can do. So kind of do a little base and then just start making petals out from it. And then you'll put your stem down and uh, Of course, these all look cute on book pages. Don't forget that. So there are those and my leaves. I came back with, so I think I might have used, I think I did use these Crayolas. So like, just doesn't have to be perfect. Some kind of leaf, or you can do a stem and a leaf. Like on this one, you'd wanna do a stem. and you can put the lines if you want. Pretty forgiving though. And um, I like to do two greens when I do the leaves. So let me find this. I'll use this light olive color and just kind of squiggle some of that in there. That's an official word, squiggle. There we go. And I'm gonna go in, I've got that light that light green. I'm going to put just a little bit of that on these. And these look really nice on watercolor paper. But, um, and you can cut them out and they're of course a little thicker. So here's the one I did like that where I went back with orange on each petal. And then here's just a whole page of leaves. So you can cut those out and put them wherever you need to to make your flower arrangement. There's some big leaves. This is acrylic paint I had left over. So you can also use acrylic paint. You don't have to just use watercolor. <laughs> I had a lot of green left, so I made a whole bunch of leaves. And then here's some more of these kind. And you know, I'm never content to leave things alone, so I might just take this and add some pink to it. Here's this one. So, just adding some, let's see how that looks. The Crayolas add more definition because it's an actual line where I just used a brush and paint to make the orange. Now that's all peeled up because this is cheap paper, but it will dry and be okay. So don't worry if your paper does that, it'll be fine. Okay. And these, let me see, what if I take a just for more, and you know, again, those loopy, more loopy petals. I 
I like to have white flashes in my flowers. I think that adds character. <laughs> so I don't try to make them solid. If you just paint a solid color, they kind of look kind of dead, I think. They need a little action. <laughs> so that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> oh, here's some, uh, let's see, this is acrylic. This is acrylic paint I had left over. And so just swirls with the brush. There's some more. So, I mean, I just did pages and pages because when you mix up some paint, you know, I had it on my palette and I was just using it up. There's just the swirls. So that is what I'm talking about for flowers. So if you want to go and make yourself some flowers, then that would be awesome. And we will continue on. I'm going to stop just a minute and get this put, put away and come back. Hey, I came back just to uh, make a couple more comments to you. I So I um, gessoed my pages and they're drying. But I, So I was cutting some of these flowers out. And I just wanted to comment to you. These are the ones I did with acrylic paint. And, you know, the cool thing about acrylic is you can get, like, some nice tones, some different colors together. And... Um, you know, on your palette, you can get just a little streak of pink, a little streak of orange or whatever, and get some gradation of color. And so it's definitely worth playing with the acrylics to get, you know, different and add white so you can get, you know, a tonal uh, difference in your leaves. And it just looks, it looks really cool in a different way. I mean, watercolor, you can do it. It just looks different. So Anyway, I just wanted to say, be sure and try acrylics while you're while you're experimenting with your flowers and uh, cutting them out. So that's all.